trust you're not suffering too much if you went out afterwards. This morning we start with consumer priorities, and especially new media, new retail, new answers. I'm going to begin with a corporate guru who's just gone independent. He's an Italian with a genuine degree in nuclear engineering, who spent his career in the agency world, latterly as European Director um, for Digital and Social Media at Ketchum. His topic is no less than redefining marketing in the context of social media, and he is no less than Gianni Catalfani. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for the introduction. Um, yes, what I would like to spend the next 20 minutes talking to you about is a topic that's probably my favorite which is the deep impact that digital and social media is having on a lot of the things that I've heard in the, in the past day or, or so. And in particular, I've heard many of you talking about the importance of the brand. And I think if we remember this word and going back to how you protect your brand, how you establish your brand, that's you know, where we have the most impact. And I'm also asking you to remember the bicycle that you see there, because I'm going to come in back to the bicycle analogy several times. Anyway, um, let's have a look at what is social media. Um, there has been somebody coming up with a very smart definition that says that every property in social media could be defined with the help of a donor. Right? So if Twitter is about saying to the world that I like uh, I, I'm eating a donut. Facebook is about saying that I like donuts. Um, I don't think we have any Russians in the house tonight, today. So I'm, I'm going to skip the, my, my Russian. But I do, we have some Chinese colleagues. So who I can, can chen means I like donuts. And that, you know, I'm getting there, I'm learning a little bit. Means I like donuts in Chinese. Uh, and that is because Brain Brain, a social network, probably none of you except our colleagues in China have heard about, has many more members in China than Facebook has. And so it's a very, very diverse and apparently complex world, right? And this list goes on and on, and you know, every day there is a new one, and every day there is a new addition. But there's one thing that all of those things have in common. And the thing that they have in common is the reason, right? I go on social media, my kids spend an inordinate amount of time on Facebook simply because all of their friends are there. No other reason. So all the discussions about complaining about uh, how bad the user interface of Facebook is, or how noisy Twitter is, it's, it's irrelevant because at the end of the day, people are the reason why these things are so popular. Now, that says that focusing on the actual how-to, how do I use Twitter, how do I use Facebook, is the wrong element. <coughs> because that's relatively simple to master. What I need to understand is the human element that's behind that. Right? So if you if you hoped I was going to talk about technology, you're in the wrong place, you can leave the room and come back in 20 minutes because I'm not going to talk about technology. I'm going to talk about what drives us to have those types of social interactions. Okay? So people. People. And let's go back to brands because the relationship between brands and people have been a little bit like the one that I showed on the slide. Right? Brands were talking. Brands were deciding what to say. Brands were carefully crafting the messages to position themselves and more or less hitting people on the head, right? And if the message didn't stick, we repeated a little bit more, right? That was our solution, yeah? A little bit more airtime, a little bit more, more ads until it sticks, right? Now, um, there's two big changes that the digital and social media revolution has brought about. First of all, if you see with this little arrow here, well, now there are two arrows. These people can talk back. Actually, all of us 
us can talk back, but our children are expected to talk back. We may be surprised when a brand listens to us. Our kids are expected to listen. There are some sociologists that are telling us that in 20 years' time, people will not do business with a brand that doesn't have ears, with a brand that doesn't know how to listen. Right? So when my son, I have, I have three kids, you know, 28, 24, and 12, so I have a big range. Um, my two older kids, when something doesn't work, when um, a service is not happening, when they can't get what they want, they go on Twitter and complain about it. I was fortunate enough to share a platform with a gentleman from British Telecom. And he told me that British Telecom over the last couple of years has been moving people from the customer service department into a social media service department, customer service department, right? And so they're, they're looking for people complaining about the service of BT using the hash, BT sucks, right? You're going to your house, you don't have your telephone lines, you go and they say, BT sucks, my line doesn't work, please come and fix it. Now, they're looking for messages like this, and then they will route them to the customer service department. Now, the, here's the really interesting part. He said, our success rate in fixing problems has not improved. Because we have the same number of technicians, we do, you know, we do good work as we were doing before. But the big difference is that if I complain about BT service on the phone, they send the technician, he will fix the problem, I'm a happy customer. Will I go and tell the world, not likely, not likely. <coughs> but if I do complain on Twitter and they respond to me on Twitter, a lot of people will see that. And so a lot of people will be positively influenced by the same, by the same single intervention that they do. Okay? So there is an opportunity in this ability to talk back. But it gets a little bit more complicated because now, as usual, we have many brands, so we have many little stars, and we have many people, and all the little stars are talking to the people. Now, all the arrows have two heads, so we, are, we understood how this works. Except that there is also something else going on, which is the people are talking among themselves. And that is perhaps the scariest thing, because it tells us that, it tells you that I'm not talking about the future. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm telling you about something that's happening right now. The only difference is that you may not know about it. They may be already complaining about your company, or they may be already praising your company and your products, but you just don't know about it. And so you pretend it's not happening, but it is happening. And it's happening in a way that's influencing opinion in a big, big way. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever booked have you ever bought anything on eBay? Or have you ever booked a holiday online? Or have you ever bought an airline ticket online? Yeah? Don't you look at the ratings? You know, when you're looking for an hotel in Cyprus or in Venice or, you know, you look at the ratings, yeah, okay, there's a, this Michelin guy gives them four stars. But all these people are saying, I complain that the rooms are dirty, so maybe I'll pick some, some other place. Why do you trust? people you never saw. Why do you trust these people? It's because you assume they're just people like you. Right? I do buy a lot of stuff on eBay, and I buy a lot of stuff from China. Most of the merchants I buy stuff from, electronics merchants, I will never meet. Yet, I trust the ones that have lots of feedback. You know, thousands of people saying, yeah, I bought from this guy, and it's reliable, it's shipping stuff. Right? That's, that's how we influence each other, and it's very human, very human behavior that technology is making available, right? So we have to know that the world is becoming more complicated, and the picture I used to illustrate this, and a switcher kindly said, I'm now an independent consultant, so I don't know what I'm going to do to, tomorrow, right? Um, and the first thing I do when I get hired by a client is show this picture. This picture is a garden just outside my office in Milan. 
And as you see, the city hall has done a pretty good job. They planted some grass, they put some trees, there are some benches. But they didn't bother watching how people were walking in the area. And so now all of a sudden there is a little path going across the garden. Now you may say because the Italians don't like rules, okay, and that's probably part of the reason. But at the same time, I say this is a great metaphor. We do not control the stuff any longer. So stop trying to think that we can control it. Yeah? But, so, my clients hate me for when I say this, because I say, well, you know, one of the questions is usually, how can I keep, keep an eye on what's going on? Well, my, my simple answer is, you can't. You have to learn to live with the fact that you can't. But at the same time, there can be order in the chaos. And so, you know, uh, my, the, 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 the next message is, actually, it can be done. And I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes to try to tell you how you can do that. Now, now that I wake you up, you know, tell you why you should wonder about this, let me tell you the how, because, you know, that's how I make a living, so that's the most important. And I'm going back to the bicycle. And um, I, used, I used to love riding bicycles, now I have arthritis, so it's a little bit difficult for me. But I still remember how a bicycle works, and I guess most of you do remember how a bicycle works. Uh, the essential elements of a bicycle are two wheels. And the two wheels are very similar. They're the same size, they're the same shape, but they have very different roles. The back wheel provides us with energy, velocity, and motion, right? That's a motion wheel. And, and so, in my analogy, this is how you do things, the mechanics side. What is the process? Even though I'm Italian, I spent a lot of time with Germans, sorry, Germans to leave, and so my colleagues are saying that I, I'm a little too fond of processes, things that you can you know, put into, you know, pert, pert and gun charts. Anyway, the rear wheel is about how it works, but the front wheel is even more important because the front wheel provides you with direction. It doesn't matter how fast you pedal, if you don't know where you're going, you will never get there, right? And so, you, you usually start with the back wheel because that's the easy way, you know? So you start with the back wheel, okay, let's, let's start to get this thing in motion, right? So let's start to get some balance and start moving, and then immediately afterwards, you have to figure out where you want to go. Otherwise, you're going to hit a tree very soon, okay? So I'm going to try to talk, talk about those two things. I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on mechanics because it's very digital. Either you spend two hours or you spend two minutes. And since I don't think I have two hours, that's the reason that reminded me, I decided to spend two minutes and just, you know, touch the surface and then leave you with some reading materials if you really... If you're really a sad person and don't know what to do with your life, you can read all this stuff, you know? So let's look at the mechanics. Uh, uh, this infographic has a message, and the message is actually, it's been there. It's been there, done that. That's a lot of experience you can draw upon, and there are processes. The process here has the distinguished honor of being the one that I use, but there are others, so don't worry. You know, you can go through phases, and all of these phases have KPIs. They can be measured, they can be, uh, they, they can give a duration, they can give, be given a price. So don't worry about all that. And as you can see, it starts with a big cloud where you know nothing, and it ends with the sales funnel. Because, you know, I come from a communication background, and we love to talk about fuzzy concepts like awareness, consideration, all of these things. But I know a lot of you are sales guys, so you worry about leads, you worry about pipeline, you worry about how you convert those potential clients into clients, you worry about measuring all this stuff. So I want to reassure that actually, you know, you can draw, uh, see my continuous line ranging from the big cloud where all these people, with this billion of people on Facebook, you know, come to realize it, you know.